Good evening. Time is 7.04 p.m. Announced that a forum is present and called the City Council Regular Meeting to order. Everyone, please stand for invocation and the Pledge of Allegiance. Dear Lord, thank you for this day. Thank you for bringing us uh, here today to conduct business as the beneficial for the, uh, the city, the major residents, and surrounding areas. And as you continue to give us your wisdom uh, of understanding and guidance, uh, thank you for your grace and mercy. And um, watch over and keep our families, and our friends, our officers on the street, and all of those that are uh, working to take care of um, our seniors. Everyone that's out here, Lord, thank you for our city staff, for our council persons. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, may you see it. Public comments may be um, taken from the artists on non agenda and agenda related items. If you fill out a yellow card, you will, uh, will have a length of time not to exceed five minutes total on all items except for public hearings. Comments made on public hearing items must be made uh, when the item comes before council and not to exceed two minutes. Um, no action made or discussion may be taken on, taken by city council during public. Uh, comments on knowledge of the items. All right. We have uh, one public comment, Mr. Roddy. We have five minutes. Is Austin Bacilli being recognized this evening? Yeah, five minutes. I'll take that as a no. We uh, have a lawsuit about that very thing. Austin Bocce League is a 501c3, and they're supposed to be treated as a unique entity. And in case you hadn't noticed on your speaker forms, there's a spot there that says if you are representing an organization. Okay, I'm going to raise my lawsuit by $1,000 every time you do that. We'll see what the judge says. I'm going to amend my lawsuit. The lawsuit I'm doing for you guys kicking me out of a, a public park against my will at the Juneteenth event last year is going to be a jury trial too, by the way. And now since our times are all cut by two thirds out of your uh, need for efficiency, I'm wondering, are you going to like resign, not resign, I'm sorry, but reduce your hours at the school district now that you guys are getting paid. You guys should all reduce your hours working at your other jobs so you can spend more time working on city business. The abysmal Timmerman Park master plan was a case in point. My gosh, I can't believe how horrible that was. North was going in the wrong direction. Um, you left out three-fifths of the park, spelled the name of the wrong, of the park wrong. So I took it upon myself to do a, a master parks plan for that space, something worthy of our citizens. I've got a pool there, neighborhood type pool like Elgin, a half size semi pro pro soccer team, or excuse me, soccer field. I have pickleball courts there parking all over the place, north and south of Ring Road there, including a baseball training facility there too. And parking, pools, a little splash pad, you know, we have hundreds of thousands of dollars. We just authorized like 200 million of borrowing. We have 80 million in the bank and we can't even put in a dog run. You guys can't even put in a disc golf course and you call yourself a parks committee. You've done nothing to get us working over there at Benny Fisher Park. You grew up at that park. They can't even open the bathroom. The vandalism is so bad. Okay, so some other items on here, naming things. Milgan. You can use the word Milgan for the East Development One if you want. Milgan Park. I'd like to name the bocce courts after Tom Bolt once we once we finish them out and make them nice like they used to be before you guys ruined them. Then I want to call it the Tom Bolt bocce courts because he helped get those in. I'd like to call Maynard Downs Willie Nelson Maynard Downs. Let's name it after Willie Nelson. 
I used to play at his restaurant at the country club. That was pretty amazing food spread, I guarantee you. Uh, let's see, what else do we have here before I run out of time? I know our time is so valuable. There's so many people here. It's going to be a long meeting. Okay. Yes, uh, we're going to hear from uh, the guy who did the 5K. That was a good event. I liked that. But let's make something like that permanent. Let's make the stakes permanent. Let's have a map on the wall that shows the trails and the distances. Let's show the other trails that are in my parks plan. You know, I did a 50-page parks plan. I had trails all over the city. You guys can't seem to even read it. So anyway, this gentleman sounds like he's interested to do. You know, some of these people, they come for one day and then they're gone. We need things that keep that have some permanence here. All right, one thing is uh, when we're talking about going to the uh, heavy commercial zoning, that's kind of a ruse in a way so that they don't have to come back for a special permit for diesel pumps. Youth Advisory Commission is a great idea. What took so long? Um, someday we're going to translate this into Spanish. Won't that be an amazing thing for you people, especially that, that like Spanish? Todos los parques es vacíos. ¿Por qué? All our parks are empty. Why? You know, I know three Hispanic families. If they all got off their tails and voted, they could take this town over in one election. I know like six black families could do the same thing. We got to get the apathy going. I mean, look at this. You know? I saw your booth at Juneteenth. It was empty. There Thank was you, nothing. Sir. Your time is back. Oh, my pleasure. My pleasure. All right, come on up, Mr. White. We have reports um, of the Miami Community Day and 5K update. Um, for the record, uh, Benny E. Lane Park belongs to the Travis County, so if you have a problem with Travis County, there's one, the one that you said we, we have locked up. Benny Fisher Park, that is actually County Park, not ours. Neither is any of that property over there. None of the property over there is ours. It belongs to the county. So I just... Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. All right, sir. Thanks for being here. All right. Good evening, everyone. I'm Derek White uh, with Evolution of Health, uh, and I would like to start by expressing my gratitude to the city of Maynard as a whole. The support from the residents has been incredibly encouraging and reaffirms my commitment to creating this event and this great city. I also want to extend my thanks to the city's leadership for including this concept in my organization into the health and wellness plans. So thank you, Mayor Harvey, Mayor Pro Tem Emily Hill, Mrs. Scott Moore, the council members, Chief Phipps, and Ms. Yolandra Santana for your support in so many ways. Uh, this year, we had a fantastic turnout, and with a few small changes, I believe we can double or even triple the attendance next year. And the city was extremely helpful in promoting the event on social media and covering some of the costs. There are some areas where we can improve as we move forward. I do hope the city sees the value in this partnership. So this year, uh, this is a breakdown of the, uh, the ages for those who attended or registered. Uh, we had a total of 90 people who registered. Uh, the vast majority of the people, the average age was 35. Uh, most of the attendees uh, or the people who registered were female, 61%, 40% uh, men. Uh, registration count out of the 90, 44 of them are, were from Maynard, uh, which is a good sign. It definitely speaks to uh, how it's received as a community. Uh, next up is Austin, and everyone else kind of trickled in. I'm definitely grateful for those who came out from uh, Kyle, Georgetown, uh, and Fort Worth. Uh, let's see. So, look at the donation amount. Wait a second. This will go into the sponsorships. But this year we had, I think it was $925 in donations. Yes, $925 in donations. Uh, and two of those donations were from one of the sponsors, Black Men's Health Clinic. Extremely grateful for their assistance. And uh, those people were Tony Ellis and Carl Spencer. A total of six hundred dollars. 
Uh, the total profit from the registrations was $2,708. Donations, $925. And that goes into Yolandra's uh, portion of it. So if anyone wants to have any questions from the city side, she can update you on that. So the overall expenses this year, um, as of the report sent in, I had uh, and not gotten the res the invoice from the uh, the officers yet. So the total, uh, all the expenditures came out to eight thousand seven hundred and I stand corrected, eleven thousand three hundred and eight dollars and thirty cents. Uh, some of those expenses uh, included uh, the DJ, uh, the finisher medals. The bouncy houses, uh, the staff, fees, officer vehicles, as well as the police officers, event shirts, advertisements, uh, videographer and photographer, postcards, and face painter. So that is everything from that report. So overall, uh, this is a great event. I've gotten a lot of great feedback from everyone. Um, and I, I do think that moving forward, uh, just an open line of communication and a clear understanding of our, of our roles, um, I think this could be a really good event that can continue going. I do hope that you see the value in this event and continue with it. And uh, I don't have any requests this year. Uh, all the requests that I asked for last year, uh, you guys were uh, grateful. I'm definitely grateful for you guys uh, uh, giving those to me. Uh, so we'll just appreciate the same thing for next year. Uh, the only change will just be uh, just open dialogue, just clear understanding, because this is a new partnership for me as well as this for y'all, and I want to make sure that this goes on and continues. So, you have any questions? Um, council members, any questions? I had a question about the fire department being there. Was who was in who was um, supposed to make sure that happened, or did we get the contacts to them, or the information to them, or any information on that would be helpful? Yes, ma'am. Uh, the fire department, Travis County ESD number twelve. Uh, we confirmed that they would be there. They reached out to me initially, um, but uh, because they were not paid uh, service providers, they were there to, uh, in the capacity of community support. Uh, anything that came up would take priority. And that's something that I didn't make clear when we uh, we were emailing back and forth. So moving forward, I'll have a um, emergency, I'll have a medical team there specifically for that purpose and not try to get the firefighters to play double duty. Okay, thank you. Does that answer your question? Okay. Uh, wasn't there a wreck or something that day? So, so they were they were poor for those things. Yeah. Other questions, comments? Um, Derek, I'll just say um, thank you for working with us. I think it was a pretty good event. Um, you know, I think there's some details that we got to work out, like some more signage and stuff like that for Absolutely. the future. Um, you know, so we can go back to the drawing, you know, board and you know just make it better every year. So, Absolutely. thank you so much. No, I appreciate you. Uh, thanks to the health committee and city staff that, that surround around that project. So, I mean, it was, it was a great thing last year. And, you know, our biggest goal was to, was to keep it going. And, and we had another one. And so I think after about three or four, I don't know what the number is, but I think that's when it's kind of locked in. So yeah. you know, let's keep, let's keep it going. I, I, I had a personal best on the, on the 5K. <laughs> so I was, I was very excited about that. Um, I will say one other thing that I forgot to include in here last year. Uh, I did not have the kids 1K this year. We did include that uh, with the goal of making sure that all the kids ran for free and they still received their finisher medals. And so the, I received several emails from the parents of those children and they were extremely grateful for that experience. And so I think that's something that we should continue to do moving forward in the future. It's a great way to engage the kids and give them something to look forward to. And, um, yeah. All right. Well, thank you, sir.
Thank you. Yeah, have a good evening. You too. All right, move right on. Consent agenda. Consider all the items. Uh, upon the items on consent agenda, consider to be self explanatory. By the councilman, will be enacted in one motion. There will be no separate I I uh, discussion on items unless requested by the mayor or a council member, in which event I will be uh, removed from the city council. The consent agenda and considered separately. Number one, consideration discussion, possible action to approve the city council minutes, June 17, 2024, city council special session, and June 18, 2024, city council special session. Is there a motion on the floor? Mayor Council, I'd like to make a motion that we approve the consent agenda. Approve consent, the consent agenda. Well, I'm sure I'll follow by Council on Wallen. We have a second. Second. Second by Councilwoman Weir. Any questions to the motion? Being none, all in favor? Opposed? Motion passes. Regular agenda items. Number two, consideration discussion, possible action on a selection of insurance benefits uh, service providers for employ employee insurance benefits covering medical, dental, vision, disability, and life insurance. Ms. Byron. Good evening, Mayor and City Council. Um, Brett Bowers, our rep from Hub, was unable to make it with us tonight, so I'm going to go over the presentation myself. Um, back on March 20th, 2024, the City Council approved the partnering with Hub International, a third-party consulting firm, to issue a request for proposals regarding health benefits for the employees. Um, and let's move on. As you see, um, an RFP was issued and proposals were accepted through May 25th. With the assistance of HUB, the proposals have been thoroughly reviewed and, o and an overview of responses is presented. Um, the providers which staff is recommending is going to be United Healthcare for medical and Renaissance for the supplement, like the additional, the dental, the vision, the life, and the supplemental life. And so, moving on. So on the first one, we're going to go over how the criteria came out on the percentage of um, cost was at 30%, we claim processing 20%, financial stability another 20, claim management reports, that's good, it's a benefit from on my side as HR, so that's still a 10%. Um, integrated systems for being able to log in and log out um, efficiently, efficiently for open enrollment, that would be like a 10%. Communication and referencing, another 5%. The total vendor response, we reached out to 21, six de um, declined to respond, and 15 participated. With that being said, on the top, we're gonna start with the easiest, which is basic life. We were looking mostly to match the benefits we have currently. Um, and at this one, with the current that we have now, which is with Texas Health, the standard, um, Renaissance came in at an 11% under um, at a savings of $315.12. Voluntary life, which is offered to employees at their cost, pretty much all the benefits would stay the same, except for if you see the spouse's guarantee report issue would be go from 25 to 50%, and it actually stays the same. There's no in extra cost. If we move on to look at the vision benefits, they are pretty much, we currently have a visa, a visa sent back. Um, what their process, what they're in, their amount would be this year and it would going up almost 43%, which would be an additional cost to the city at 4,600. Stay, if we went with Renaissance, um, we would have one extra, a little bit extra on the benefit for frames. Right now you can only get them at every 24 months where this you can get them every 12. Um, and it's a 3% cost savings. Dental, currently we have dental with Texas Health. Um, they are proposing to go up another 70% this year, um, which would be a cost of four, $4,562, $4, sorry. Um, and of course, we were proposing to go with Renaissance. It's a 12% savings at $7,300 per year. And here's our big one, medical. So we reached with all of the 15, the top three were going to be, um, actually, believe it or not, Texas Health came back and dropped their um, 
their cost this next this proposal for a ten and a half percent at a savings of 135. United Healthcare still came in on top at savings of 167,000 at a 13 percent. And then Baylor Scott and White also was another um, benefit option with a savings of 7.4 percent. Um, with United Healthcare, they give us an 8,000 tech credit, which means they're all the online basis. We can get a link on our website where they'll be able to do all their open enrollment themselves online. They'll have access to all both Renaissance and all their uh, benefits online. They don't have to come through HR. They don't have to get a special link. This would be all online for us. Um, medical benefits, the, the changes on it would be pretty much keeping of the same, except for there's two nice things. Your, the MOOP would change. The MOOP would drop. Thousand dollars and go that a MOOP is a maximum out of pocket, and that would be changed from five thousand to four thousand for individual and changed from ten thousand to eight thousand for family. Another nice one so the in network metal, medical health and the office visits would drop for with United Healthcare, plus any children under 19, it's a zero. Um, urgent care is also a little less expensive on the um, copay. So moving on, looking at the recommendations, going with Renaissance Life, which would cover our basic life, volunteer life, vo um, dental and vision. The savings would be pretty, pretty extensive, plus the matching offers would look nice. The nice thing about the vision is the extra frames you can get, uh, the frequency of the frames. Medical you, um, with United Healthcare would be coming under 13%. The maximum out of pockets change and with a nice $8,000 tech credit. And so the overall savings for the year for the city would be 174000 Nine hundred and seventy-two dollars and eight cents. There will be a recommendation on the next portion. Um, there is a cost recommendation moving forward with um, uh, maybe improving the basic life, adding short-term disability, long-term disability, and a reserve fund. Um, and we'll talk about that. Um, the city staff is recommending adding at least the short-term disability and then starting a reserve fund. All right, any questions, Council Member? Tracy, I'm not familiar with uh, Renaissance Vision that, that much. With the cost savings, and I, I and it is good to have the frequency of 12 months versus 24 on the free yeah. allowance. I just usually find that they pick it back up again with the lenses or his copay. Did you get a chance to review that to see if how that I did, them? and we have a guarantee for two years, guarantee rate for two years. And they're not, it, it doesn't, the rates cannot change after, until after the two years, we'll have a two-year contract. How does that uh, reserve fund work? So that's on the next agenda item. Take more questions or a motion. On the signing up with through the tech portal, mm -hmm. do you feel comfortable with that? So... I still will go back and make sure everybody signed in and and do it before. I don't like to tell them that, but to make sure nobody's benefits lapse. Right. That was my concern. If they're yes. not able to get into it or if they have trouble and don't understand And it. don't understand it. And there will be classes on it. Okay. So there, then that way we don't have that issue. But I still have the one. You know, I, we have officers that work at midnight. They're off for three days. They don't, mm -hmm. you know, we only get two weeks to do it. And usually I go in the last day and I do it. Okay, that's, that was a concern. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mayor, go ahead. Mayor Council, I'd like to make a motion that City Council select United Healthcare for the medical benefits provider and Renaissance for the dental, vision, disability, and life insurance benefits provider and authorize the city manager to negotiate individual service contracts with the consultants selected to bring back for consideration and approval by the city council. So motion on board for uh, uh, by council. 
If I'm right, is there a second? Second. Second by the council. Where is there any questions to the motion? I have one question. Yes, ma'am. I was trying to get my voice together first. Um, currently, do we have over 75% of our employees participating in R in the city? Okay. We do. So that definitely won't be a problem. Mm -mm. Reading that? Okay. Not at all. Questions? Um, all in favor? Opposed? Motion passed. Um, moving on to number item number three, consideration discussion possible action to approve the resolution authorizing the creation of an employee benefits trust, designating the city manager, finance director, and human resource director to be trustees of said trust, and authorizing the trust to purchase various forms of insurance for the benefit of city officers. Employees, retired, um, and qualified retirees, and their dependents. All right. So, this agenda item, this goes back to the reserve fund. So, the reserve fund would be the seventy-five thousand dollars worth of savings, and we're going to recommend starting a benefits trust where we'll take that seventy-five thousand, you um, follow through with the investment policies of the city, and start leave that somewhere in a, a, a reserve account to invest where the, the proceeds to it will keep building and this will give alleviation to future premium increases for sure for um, future added benefits for the city employees where it doesn't hit the budget and this also the budget trustees um, can be council or staff we're recommending staff is there in on deck every day This also saves us that 1.75% on the resolution for the state tax that, because they can charge us a premium tax without one. Mm. No. So that's the common. That's not the mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, it's very common. And like I said, it, this assists in the future premiums going up or adding benefits. It doesn't, if we can make money on the reserve account sitting there and put that towards more benefits or savings for the city. I think I'm confused. Who, so who will the trust? Who will the trust? It'll be the city manager, finance director, and myself, or the HR director, not myself. Okay. I'm sorry. This is very new to me from mm -hmm. this Go ahead. Can you? provide a deeper explanation. I'm lost on the word trust. Okay. But <laughs> but the um this is a committee or a group? it's a reserve fund is what we're we're proposing like to have a reserve fund to take seventy five thousand from this the savings and put it in a reserve fund. But on it we need to do a benefit trust. We want to use this for benefits in the future. And so what we want to do is be able to invest it where we'll get either higher interest rates to collect more proceeds on the money that's sitting there. So if you do, if we establish the benefits trust, we, it's a little different than just investing. It'll be specific, it'll be more for the benefits. And like I said, if we're not establishing this and using the money saved to go towards pre, um, future benefits, they can charge us a one point seven five percent higher interest um, premiums rate. Uh, well, so if we decide, this, it will go with how the money rolls, and then if we decide to go back through like another pool, we can eliminate the trust and put it just back in the general. Is what I understood. Okay. Thank you. And I would say council. Trust makes sense. Mm -hmm. We can approve this. Oh, for sure. sure.
thousand annually. On the short term, yeah. Courses. Yeah, we have one more. For the re for the people coming up, do we have a large pool of students retired? I mean, what's the, uh, we've got a while before we start. We've got a while for, before that, and that would have to be a whole resolution for uh, for retiree benefits. Okay. That, yeah, that's got to come back. Okay, thank you. Mayor Council, I'd like to make a motion that we approve resolution number 2024-19, authorizing the creation of an employee benefits trust, designating the city manager, finance director, and human resources director to be trustees of said trust, and authorizing the trust to purchase various forms of insurance for the benefit of city officers, employees, qualified retirees, and their dependents. So moved and for by Council and by Mayor Jeff. Second. I second. Second by Council and Father. Uh, any questions to the motion? I do have uh, I guess I'm just looking for the what they say about So you're looking at the resolution or the actual declaration of trust? So in the case of this trust, the way that it's being set up, correct, you have uh, employees that are going to be trustees. If city council would like to have more checks and balances, there's nothing to prohibit the city council asking that reports be made to the city council, not just at budget time, but at other times when investments are going to be made or any action is being taken by the trustees of this trust for um, your checks and balance requirement. The consultant, my understanding, and Tracy can uh, confirm this, but um, Irene in our office was the one that worked on this trust, but it's my understanding that the consultant was the one that was recommending that the trustees be the employees because they are involved on a day-to-day -day basis but there is nothing to prohibit city council from adding any additional provisions or changes to the trust for that checks and balance. Yeah, and it's, it's not about uh, current positions, it's about future positions. Sure. In a light of some other things. Right, the dissolution again can happen, but if you'd like for it to come to council before a dissolution so that the council can um, direct the trust on that, then you can make those changes. We would ask, 
if you are wanting us to provide some checks and balances, and again, Tracy, I'm not sure if you're needing to have this approved today or if we can come back and provide some additional checks and balances for council consideration next meeting. So we could, um, what we could do is also amend it. We can come back with an amendment since she's needing it um, done today. But we could certainly come back with an amendment to the declaration of trust. Well, okay. Can you speak to the compensation? Which section? No, it's my understanding that there is no compensation for the trustees. Is the drawing? Because we okay. kind of what is talked about in the reimbursement. Just reimbursement. To do the new right. Right, but no, it's just it's just your typical reimbursement. It's my understanding that it's just your typical reimbursement, like if they had to travel for a meeting or do a, a you know, meal or something like that, but it's not actual reimbursements for duties. I feel better for language. Sure. So um Again, one of the things, though, that's going to happen is because you, if you approve this, then it's the trustees that need to come back and make the changes or accept them. So I'm just letting you know that the trustees would need to do that as well because the declaration is you're appointing the trustees. So um, the trustees will need to sign the document next time. And again, they would be agreeing to um, council being um, providing the checks and balances that y'all are discussing right now. So again, if you have your trust in your finance director, your HR director, and your city manager to come back and sign that um, amended document, then I would recommend moving forward. I don't know if I trust them. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I trust them. So <laughs> I trust them. Other questions? All right, uh, I'll second. Opposed? Motion passes, and this is four on one. Discussion of possible action on resolution to create a youth advisory council staff to advise the council program, approve the plan, approve the bylaw, approve the grant application process, direct the appointment to staff liaison, and provide information on staff. Hi, everyone. Um, we were here at last meeting, uh, and as directed by council, we brought a resolution with all the details and uh, process for adopting the youth advisor, the main or youth advisor commission into uh, the city uh, requested by Councilman uh, Aaron Molino. Um, I, the resolution is here and it has all the details um, included but not limited to bylaws, application process, the program uh, concept, uh, any other matters related to the Youth Advisory Commission is here, including the selection and appointment of the staff liaison that will be overseeing the day-to-day -day duties of the program. Uh, do you guys have any questions um, that I may be able to answer or any comments? Questions, comments? Um, thank you for this, for your hard work. Um, I went over this, and I think uh, a lot of it's pretty good to me. So if council, you have any uh, opinions or input on it, just let us know. Yes, ma'am. Council members, Veronica Rivera, Assistant City Attorney. Uh, one of the things that I do want to point out is there are 
I believe two items that you all do need to decide. One is the branding and the other one is identifying who the liaison will be. So if you are inclined to make a motion, if you could include that in your motion. My question was, who would be that liaison? And um, and what was the reason of choosing 8th grade, 12th grade? Um, the liaison is any city staff that you deem qualified to run these. Um, and then this is our standards that TML, uh, Texas Municipal Library has for this program. Uh, when this program is established and we are in a better position, we can add under that same program a committee, like a mini committee, or they call it subcommittees, for younger things, uh, for younger uh, students that they are mainly, uh, they call it junior youth advisory commission that runs from fourth grade all the way to seventh grade, which the older commission uh, members can actually mentor these kids to later on pass the baton, like you said, the duty to be at the actually commissioners of the commission. Um, that's uh, basically standards. Uh, the junior advisory commission is pretty new to the TML. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, the first one that brought it was Killing about, I think, five years ago, if I'm not mistaken, and it's the only one right now with established junior subcommittee, uh, but it has to be under uh, the Jude Advisory Committee as a subcommittee. I guess it may add on to what you're saying. So this one will eventually add a junior uh, youth advisory council, and then it will go up to where they will have opportunity to go into the, I guess, the regular youth advisory council. Is that what you're saying? I'm only asking, we have the same thing in Bryan, but it was only juniors and seniors, mm -hmm. or there are some in um, some of the other um, towns that I saw, and so they were only high school up to a certain level um, or at a certain age range and then it went up and so I was just wondering because eighth grade seemed to be one of the few and in some um, I guess in some capacities in schools it's they're coming from a totally different schedule a different kind of space and things like that so that kind of can cause a difference and maybe even a difference in um, thinking and ability to be able to help and so that's why I was just wondering where that was coming from. Um, it does depend at the end of the day at city council what level they want to. I just go with city uh with TML minimum standards with A grade. Um, uh, in my personal experience, uh yes, there was different between mentality and everything, but at the end of the day it's also an opportunity for our older kids to also mentor kids that are transitioning that middle school to high school. And besides just a little inconvenience down there. We didn't have any measure. Actually, they all use it as a learning experience and it create more diversity on the group and we're able to make sure different areas of the youth group it has actually represented it. At, but at the end of the day, if you guys want to make an amendment and change that, um, it's, all, it's, it's on your hands. I just go with the minimal standards of TML. Um, for our youth? Yeah, like are they consistent? Like, cause I know the, the center lane starts a lot of things, there's a lot of things. Um, do they engage in any uh, political system? They, all their leaderships goes at different levels that include municipality, uh, skills and knowledge, which include voting. Uh, it will be part of any leadership programs that is through TML. 
also when we do activities or the or the kids do activities like leadership and training or any development activities that we do uh it will rotate every year what they learn but everything at the end is included uh they will be trained to be full leaders from every aspect of the government uh perspective they do have a lot of classes and uh suggested programs and training in cml um which in my personal experience we did all of them every year uh when i was in clean uh so i do expect to see something very similar here so we can make sure all our kids are we're creating full leaders with the full knowledge that they have they they need to be successful in in our city in our community <laughs> and we also take suggestion from city council or any other leaders in the community that hope the kids should be benefited they learn any other skills Members would like to have more thoughts. Yeah. TML does it by grade, not by age category, since um, kids with different age categories can be on one specific grade, so it will, it's better to. Um, have them by grade because it will be easier to track. Um, that's the main reason they don't do a specific age. It's not about the grade. This no. TMS. Does TML also provide like the basic funding to get the program started? No, that will be within the city, which um, as you can see, it will be something that it will impact the city's budget for next fiscal year. Um, and if I'm not mistaken, I will have to come back for that. <laughs> um, usually every city does allocate an um, amount to run the program that will include any expenses of the program including when they go to the TML youth summits uh, any events or any activities the kids are involved into it other questions Sorry, sir. Do we have a list of recommended staff for the uh, DA job? Um, we don't. That is up to you guys. Whoever you guys want to appoint. So, well, we don't want to just appoint the press. Appoint somebody. They don't do somebody. Are you interested in? I could run it if that is what I was told. <laughs> if I'm told. Who here has the most experience in doing this type of thing? Yolanda. <laughs> Yolanda. I think I would yeah. like to know who he has the bandwidth to do it. It does seem like a very, very tasking. Um, it does help to have someone that has experience with um, how knowing how the program should look, but then also having experience going to the community and being able to get the program started because um, it seems like it's an August to May um, thing and so being able to get it off the ground really quickly would help as well be very beneficial is it too much to put it out there for you because I guess it's not fair to put it all on you automatically <laughs> but um, I guess to bring it out to the city and then see who would be interested at all, I guess, that way. 
does it have to be a director or could it be an actual staff member that has a passion for it but may not know to have that opportunity what y'all think Um, basically, when the kids apply to the program, it's the first step. Mm -hmm. And then they decide whether or not they want to run to be an actual commissioner or one of the eight shares of commissioners, mm -hmm. which later on, they will come in front of city two city council members, the city liaison, and the city manager to do a formal interview. And you will have to pass a, you know, a leadership screening uh and then the city, though that board, that panel will select whether or not that kid passed for to be a commissioner or not. Uh, it's basically an appointed, com these commissioner shares are appointed shares by city council. So after they, the city council select their eight, um, they will come here, get sworn in in front of you guys, and there will be the main shares. That's what I thought. Never even quite believed that. I think it's time to cut some shit. So I don't think that that serves them. For the resolution? Or uh, the, the or, yeah, resolution. Um, if I'm not mistaken, the resolution talks about the liaison. Oh, the bylaw. I, we can clarify that a little bit more if that's needed. Uh, other than that, uh, I think it's good for us. We have some youth that are definitely going to get through the process right now. They're just in finding out how to get involved and learn. I think this
fate we may have to at some point in time consider how that's going to fate but at some point Just keep in mind that the commissioner, the ex commissioner, will be wronged by the oh, no, no, commissioner. Yeah, I yeah. Got that part. I, I just, mm -hmm. you know, I got a little experience working with kids, so <laughs> might just a little bit more. This was one of my babies in killing, FYI. L literally, this uh, wow. the Jura advisory Why commission in killing was <laughs> was it was my baby. So it's one of the projects that I feel more proud in my entire career. I think once you get, you know. Anything you start, it's going to really hard on how you tell them past something that it's been used past in this uh, post. Because uh, you have to anticipate and try to make it. It should be done. But I just want to present them to get them that part that comes from the past. So we want to just have. Just a lot, but I don't want to go deep because that's just one thing we want to get in our under our obligation. So some of those folks are just not sure because there's going to be some expectations here if you go from twenty two feet. Proceed knowing that there's going to be some things that I'll be back. It's a good thing that I come in from the point of two more years. Because it's got to be balanced both. Well, and that's what I was thinking. That's why I was coming to the question. Margaret? Huh? Margaret? 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 Yeah, that pay, uh, that volunteer pay. I think so. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So I'm not saying it's her. I'm just saying it's these like bad that serve oriented. Seeing how we're in kind of a good part. They all fall under the same staff. Hundred percent for it. I just hope that y'all get busy. <laughs> so just you know, whatever y'all can figure out to, to get it for for it. I have ways in how my mind I think to make it work. So yeah. So stay tuned. I think the input's important in the council. Yeah. Uh, to come and give us some training because if you don't give us people it it could it could require us in that to see that that point that town and some of the guys that get other service on on but you know that's something that's gotta be tapped up before we can do the work. 
Yeah, I personally would not mind helping in, in any way possible. So just reach out to me and, yeah, I'm there. I would be available as well. And just want to throw out there um, that because this is a, a program adopted by TML, when it comes to kids and adults, unless they're like city staff and city background check and it's on the city stage, they are not allowed to be, you know, uh, do. We can partner, the, the program can partner with other organizations to do events and do volunteer programs and all that, but within both within the uh, program day to day or planning or working with the kids, it does have to be city staff, city council under the city. Yeah, I think that's correct. City council then. Questions? Mayor, Council, um, I did speak to Yolandra, but Mr. Moore as well. But um, I think it's interesting in my position. I did speak just to share this information, spoken to other cities, other, other city secretaries. Um, it's pretty new, so I've been picking, you know, their brains and see what they think. It is a lot of work. Um, I did volunteer to assist if needed, I, just because I want to know about it, not, you know, it, it's just a new skill for me as well. So I am open to, you know, just to kind of look and see how it's, how the process goes, especially because they're going to be working with city council and that kind of falls in their by department. Um, but my recommendation would be to limit the grade um, for maybe junior and senior or something to start small because that can always be changed later on. Um, but well, it's totally up to you. Um, I don't know, but that would be my recommendation to Yolanda at that level. Um, for me, I would say to, if, if you don't want eighth graders, that's fine. But from freshmen up, I would say to have it there because what it is is that your olders are training your youngers to take their spots. So if you just have juniors and seniors, then you're running with a limited pool and it's not giving the youngers the experience to be able to move up and see the production of their hard work. For also other cities that what they do, they limit the grade of commissioners who is holding shares, but I still allow other lower grade like eight, nine, ten to be part of the program. They just kinda run to be commissioners. Commissioners only can run by you know, ten, eleven grade. That's maybe what Miss Deja has seen in other uh cities because that's that's something that I have seen before, uh, but again, it's, it's up to you guys uh, how you want to limit it. No, I can agree with that. We got a good group of different ideas. One, great for the folks about the thing, thing uh, only for a thing, thing only. Yeah. 
Please remember. Resource maker. I think a, a few things. One, we want to make sure that we're talking about money we're talking about money. But typically, I think the higher the number, the more money we're talking about. So in some cases, it may be several employees as opposed to one guy who has a job for a few months. I, I personally would like to see that different than that. Um, Sometimes the young kids, you know, bounce around and get money and they can get money from the parents. I know my parents did that for me. So just be aware of that. Um, I know that there's some parents that are like, oh, I don't want my kids to get money. I don't want them to get money. It would take some motion. Um, one more time. Yes, I would just like to say that I like the brand. That has our logo with the the name of it written out. I like that one. I like to say youth advisory council. Um, this one. Um, which one of these ones do you guys like for the icon? I don't like the icon. Well, that's that's not up to the senior male. <laughs> that's their acronym for it. So they're just 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 icons. So I think that first one would be the main one, and then the small, the just a yak <laughs> would be just the icon. <laughs> that we have our M for the main. So, uh, at, at least for me, it's been a very easy way for how I can just make the emotion and turn it into money. Um, did you want to get money? Um, Maya, in our motion, we also make the suggestion that we'll give the um, city a painting token for the city. Mayor Council would like to make a motion that City Council approve resolution number 2024-20, creating the Maynard Youth Advisory Commission, establishing the Maynard Youth Advisory Commission program, approving branding, approving bylaws, approving an application process, selecting, and I would say having 11th through 12th grade as the commissioners and the lower grades as um, resource members and designating the city manager to um, select the city staff liaison and providing for related matters. We have a motion on for Councilman Moreno. Is there a second? Which branding? Oh, um, the first one, the Mainer Youth Advisory Commission, the one spelled out. And then the icon would be with the yak on the side of the main U.S. logo. We have a motion on the screen by Councilman Moreno. Is there a second? A second. Second by Councilman Wallace. Any uh, questions to the motion? I have a question. Yes, ma'am. The way that the motion was written um, for the members that I get a chance to, the other members, is that just an A to staff or is that all grades to staff that could be? The motion that was currently made was A through 12. Is that the option? 
11th and 12th. If you wanted all grades, then that would be a friendly amendment or an amendment. Do you have a question? Other questions? Oh, the starting of recruitment can start as early as you guys approve the um the budget would be Mr. Moore when you're ready. It would start in that fiscal September October. So are we kicking off this um uh, for September. for budget on uh, we were going to put it into the new fiscal year budget. Um so we would have to this year. Um I was planning to start recruiting. Um, so we would have to find something for this. We turns out kick off same stuff. Um, just for basic stuff to kick get out this year. Well, I think if we get something as far as Should get us pretty low for the Department of Justice. So we can go get about twenty million or something. We can we can but it's not yeah, yeah, that'd be something we can definitely have a conversation with the other state. Um, when I was there, it started with twenty five thousand, and as the years passed by, it kind of led. It was forty five thousand. Uh, about the year of twenty twenty two, when we hosted the good uh um summit, actually, uh, they got their forty five thousand plus a extra eighteen to they be able to host it and get all the supplies and all of that. So we were not going to host it yet. Mm -hmm. Don't don't get excited. <laughs> we were not hosting GML or UTML yet. Well, no, it was in good context. But we just wanted to have a big, but it was just mm -hmm. good. Yes. All right. Uh, unless there's any other questions, come on. Seeing none. So, so oh, thanks for that. Thank you. Mayor, Council Members, Veronica Rivera, Assistant City Attorney. Um, the last time that this policy came to you for consideration, Council provided direction to bring it back with um, streets being included, the renaming of streets. And so that um, policy was revised and placed in backup. However, in reviewing the backup policy, we did find some minor revisions and I just wanted to go over that, or you have been provided a red line. Um, the revisions are to um, Article 1A, um, Article 3A, and Article 5B.
So again, if you are inclined to um, make a motion, if you could just state in your motion with the revisions provided by City Legal. And I'm here to answer any questions. Exhibit A are the finals. Yeah, they're, it's just uh, summary forms that they would fill out that would come back to the city. That's the Those are the applications. It's providing the proposal and the significance of the main impact for the community. Um, what I'm hearing is like, um, that motion of actual application. Or an application. Yes, sir. Yes, city, um, city staff would be doing that, or we can assist city staff. Questions, comments? Mayor Council, I'd like to make a motion that we approve the naming policy for city owned property and facilities in the city of Maine and authorize the city manager to execute the policy. Uh, with the revised terms. With the re revisions provided. By city legal. By city legal. So I want to call like the same article. I second. Second by council. Yes, sir. Yeah. Oh, how often? Yeah. It, they would just uh, be coming in. They're going to the street name. Then people come in. Then that change the date and time. Or is it more or less the same? It would be public, public sir. Then. As the exhibit A or B, is that what, um, when it's open to the public for the public hearing, is this what they would need to have completed first, or who completes those exhibits? I guess that's what I'm, I'm giving them through that part. Yes, it would be the individual or organization that's coming to the city wanting to make a change or, uh, or naming a facility.
if you would like a presentation or provide the application with no action, just the discussion, no, and then okay. Have a discussion. Yeah. Yes. Would you like us to go ahead and include that in the policy? You can make we can make that as part of the motion. That's fine with me personally. Okay, how do I say that from the amendment to bring it back before council for add, add to the policy to bring it back before council bef uh, at a separate meeting before taking action? Add a, presentation. add a presentation from the amendment to add a presentation before before the public hearing or any action is taken. I second that. Second final reading should write some special house actions on ordinance of city of Miami six acres of water is being located in Miami Town Six for the Drake Division of City City Gym. Final providing for a winter quarrel and special code and provide for so like make that a mayor council. Uh so this is the second and final reading, as it says, for the um the kind of remainder portion in between the Ginzel and the Weir tracks that was labeled as county right away on some surveys. So we have processed this annexation as a right away annexation. Um, so it had two public hearings instead of one. Um, okay, so any questions about the right away? Questions, Brian? Mm -hmm. Mayor Council, I'd like to make a motion that we approve the second and final reading of ordinance number 753 of the city of Maynard, Texas, annexing 1.222 acres, more or less, being located in Travis County, Texas, and adjacent and contiguous to the city limits, making findings of fact, providing severability clause, and an effective date, and providing for open meetings and other related matters. So I'll motion for I second. second. Questions to the motion. Hearing none. Favor. Motion passes four to zero. Now move to Sarah. Consideration second final reading certain special house action on ordinance rezoning one land on four point six seven six sixteen one U.S. House Bill six as voted by the city three years ago. Sure. Yes, so, so this property. Um, it's pretty much almost the end of the city limits as you're heading towards Elgin. Um, that's over there, the old Pintoli building now, 5F Mechanical. Um, it was approved um, on first reading for C3 um, with the recommendation for um, 11 uses to be removed, which uh, some of them were the more industrial uses and then ones that weren't necessarily in alignment with the city's goals. Um, and those uses, they were the adult-oriented business, data center, gas station full service, gas station limited, light industrial, liquor store, offices, warehouse, product development services, research services, truck stop or travel center, and vehicle storage facility. Uh, so the ordinance has been updated to include those prohibited uses, uh, as well as your motion, uh, if you're inclined to approve it here on second reading. Uh, there are representatives here as well, if you have questions for them. Mayor Council, I'd like to make a motion that we approve the second and final reading of ordinance number 754, rezoning one lot on 4.475 acres, more or less being located at 16011 East U.S. Highway 290, Maynard, Texas, from A, agricultural, agricultural to C, 3, heavy commercial with the following uses removed, 
adult oriented business, uh, data center, center, light industrial offices, warehouse, product development services, research services, truck stop or travel center, vehicle storage facility, gas station, uh, gas station limited, and liquor store. Motion on floor will pass. Thank you, Lamar. Anybody like to second? I second. Second by Councilwoman Wallace. Any questions to the motion? So, there, I, do I remember something about that if we didn't want, like there's an opportunity if they wanted to go to gas station with this and we have to do something special? No, the way the ordinance uh, is written and before you, it, they would be prohibited uh, outright. Like they couldn't, they'd have to come back and amend, like basically do another rezoning to uh, amend what's before you. Um, C3, um, as it's currently written in our code, allows gas stations by right. Uh, all the other commercial categories require a specific use permit. Uh, but with the prior recommendation, uh, was to just remove gas stations as allowable. So this one will have. Yeah, there's no plans for yeah. gas there. The intended use is for construction, uh, sales, and rental for uh, large construction equipment. Is it? So I'm, I, and I believe the question was do we have to have gas stations allowed? Yeah, so, yeah, so the summary form, you know, prior to the the last motion at the last meeting, it, it called it out that C3 allowed gas stations by right, so that way you were aware that, because, um, yeah, mm -hmm. and that's what uh, we had. Other questions? Is this some sort of permit? No other questions to the motion? Is that it? I do. I'm sorry. Go Going ahead. forward. Is this a small business that is going here? You want to come on up? Jeremy Rogers representing Kimley Horn. I actually have a representative of the company that flew in from Florida tonight for questions. Good evening, my name is Dan. Um, I work for National Equipment Dealers, the proposed use. Um, we are a family owned company. Um, we're in uh, four other states besides Texas, Florida, Georgia, South Carolina, and North Carolina. Um, this would be our 20th location uh, dealership. Um, so take that as you will as, as, as a small business, um, but we would, uh, like I said, we're family owned, um, and this location would, uh, probably be looking to hire probably around 20 people, um, for this local branch. Um, does that answer the question? Questions? All right, let's take a vote. All in favor? Opposed? Against? All, all in favor? Opposed? Motion passed. All right. Either way, safe travel. Thank you. Second and final reading of consideration of special topic action on a uh, a special use permit to permit up to 3,850 3, square feet of housing offered in the Spring Hill Manor approximately by eight by seven unit, um, one acre less than residential. So this one, um, it is for one of the specific pad sites 
um, along 290, where there's a proposed Chipotle. So it's a, a 210 inch building, and one half is proposed to be that Chipotle, and the other half is where this medical use is being requested. I believe it's proposed to be a, a dental office. Um, nothing's been filed regarding that, but some of the documents have that included. Um, this is separate from the what was approved for retail connections. They got 7,500 square feet, so this would be like overall for the development additional to that, but not just specific to the one lot. Um, but combined, like the entire development is you know, 426,000 square feet of commercial use. Um, and this, with those two, with this specific use and the prior approved one, uh, it represents just under 3% of the total allowable area. Um, I said it was also approved on first reading. Questions, council members? Um, can we please like, uh, pass down Other economic areas, and they're very intentional about what they're putting there. And one of the things I've noticed is um, there's there's every now and then a maybe unintentional this is the alignment, and I just want to make sure that we're in, that our developer is around the same case now is for tomorrow. There's just the shopping centers and other economic centers that have an increasing number, I've seen, um, have an increasing number of medical stuff that's popped in there um, over time period. And they typically don't uh, identify communities of color. Folks might be our big economic you know, development space. And so um, we have now about 10 or so people that have square feet now mm -hmm. um, of medical centers in that area. And so we have Brandon uh, Medical Center that we saw on the agenda for um, was our big, our big agenda question was for Cleveland Hospital. And so we're not closed to that today. But we are. We did get to that uh, square feet, so um, that's not going to necessarily be closed. Our property tax is closed. We're going to have that regardless. So uh, just want to keep that in mind. Uh, that's why we made some decisions about uh, early a couple of years ago about you know made an entity that wanted to be by us was um, a, a big point. Me personally, I would like to post that this is the last one. Mm -hmm. um, and then as these phase out, <laughs> we go back to what we said. Um, so that, that, that's why we did it. That's why we approved the three of them. So we don't uh, put them in. So, all right, I'm done. I'll post. Questions, comments? Motion? To the public out there, the reason why I'm saying that is because we got to be programmers, <laughs> and we can't be programmers for the community and also have ask folks to have um, property tax. We need our set of tax dollars to come to the table here so we can spend any money we want to spend any money we want without killing our people. <laughs> so um, I agree with you. I think we need more set of tax. Right. So that's that's why we're pushing it out because we have a bunch of us here in the arena. And with that being said, did council I'd like to make a motion that we approve the second and final reading of the subdivision of a specific use permit 
up to 3,860 square feet of medical office and medical clinic in Manor Crossing Block A, Lot 7, being one acre more or less and located at the northwest intersection of FM 973 and U.S. Highway 290, Manor, Texas. Motion on four by Councilwoman Lynch. Is there a second? Second. Second by Councilwoman Maria. Any questions to the motion? Questions to the motion? Seeing none, all in favor? Opposed? Motion passes. Zoning Commissioner, Celeste uh, Celestine. 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 Mm -hmm. Celestine Turner, place number 518. Approved that. Thank you. Yes. So, Mayor Council, I'd like to make a motion that we acknowledge and accept the resignation of Planning and Zoning Commissioner Celestine Sermon, place number five, and declare a vacancy. Uh, motion on the floor by Councilman Wallace. Is there a second? I second. Second by Councilman Moreno. Any questions to the motion? Question to the motion. Seeing none, all in favor? Oh, motion passes. City Council will now move into closed executive session. Uh, pursuant to the provisions of Chapter 5 of the Texas Government Code, in accordance with the ordinance contained in. Section 551 Planning and Zoning Commission Houses where this medical use is being requested. I believe it's proposed to be a, a dental office. Uh, nothing's been filed regarding that, but some of the documents have that included. Um, this is separate from the what was approved for retail connections. They got 7,500 square feet, so this would be like overall for the development additional to that, but not just specific to the one lot. Um, but combined, like the entire development is you know, 426,000 square feet of commercial use um, and this with those two with this specific use and the prior approved one uh, it represents just under three percent of the total allowable area um, I said it was also approved on first reading questions councilman Other economic areas, and they're very intentional about what they put in there. And one of the things I've noticed is um, there's there's every now and then a maybe unintentional. This is your owner, and I just want to make sure that we're that our developers and everyone around us kind of stays around and builds for tomorrow. Shopping centers or economic centers that have an increasing number I've seen um, have an increasing number of medical stuff in the shopping centers um, over time period, and they typically don't are uh, identified as communities of color or communities of high income. So I just want to make sure that you know this is supposed to be our big economic. You know, development space. And so uh, we have now about 10, almost 11,000 square feet now mm -hmm. uh, of medical units in that area. And so that is random uh, medical centers that we saw been before. Uh, you know, our big, our big agenda question was for the hospital. And so we're not 
supposed to have sex, but we are. We did that for like about what three, four years. So no, not for myself. I probably try to do it. We're gonna have a daughter. So uh, just want to keep that in mind uh, before we made some decisions about uh, earlier a couple of years ago about you know maybe somebody that wanted to be a part of this Personally, I would like to hope that this is the last one. Mm-hmm. Um, and that as we fade out, that we go back to the cell. Because uh, that, that, that's why we did it. That's why the three of us did it. So, uh, but I'm done. I'll stay. Questions, comments? Motions? To the public out there, the reason why I'm saying that is because we got to be programmers. You know, we can't be programmers for the community also. We got to have folks that have responsible property tax. We need our sales tax dollars to come up to pay for these so we can be able to get out to our people. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, um, I agree with you. I think we need more sales tax. So uh, that's, that's why we're pushing it out because we have money on this. We are a community. With that being said, to the council, I'd like to make a motion that we approve the second and final reading of the subdivision of a specific use permit up to 3,860 square feet of medical office and medical clinic in Maynard Crossing Block A, Lot 7, being one acre more or less and located at the northwest intersection of FM 973 and U.S. Highway 290, Maynard, Texas. Motion on four by Councilwoman Wright. Is there a second? Second. Second by Councilwoman Maria. Questions to the motion? Questions to the motion? Seeing none, all in favor? Opposed? Motion passed. Number nine, not information. Uh, Planning Zoning Commissioner, uh, Celestine. 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 Mm-hmm. Celestine Turner, place number five. It's pretty bad. Thing. Yes. So, Mayor Council, I'd like to make a motion that we acknowledge and accept the resignation of Planning and Zoning Commissioner Celestine Sermon, place number five, and declare a vacancy. So, I'm going to by Councilman Wallace. Is there a second? I second. Second by Councilman Moreno. Any questions to the motion? Question to the motion. Seeing none, all in favor? No. Motion passes. City Council will now move into closed executive session. Uh, pursuant to the provision of Chapter 5 of the Civil Service Code, in accordance with George P. St. Ed, Section 551.074 First Council and delivery of real personal property, section 551.074. City Council will now reconvene into open session pursuant to the provisions of Chapter 551 Section Government Code. Take action, if any, on items discussed in the closed session. 
consider, um, the team consider the discussion possible action on the appointment of commission plan bonus adjustment uh, uh, limit by term. Do we have a motion? Just remember, we have uh, two spots. Planning and zoning. I uh, would entertain a motion or a question. If you have a question, sorry. Mayor Council, I'd like to make a motion that we appoint what's her name? Gabrielle Orion and Jeffrey. What's his name? Oh, Lord. Okay, when um, the Okay, here we are. I'm sorry. What number is it? Gabrielle for place three. Oh, Gabrielle. Oh, all right. Uh, Orion for place three. And Jeffrey, what's his name? Oh, what's your last name? Stan Stanslin. Uh, for place number five and Gabriel Miller for alternate number one unex uh, to fill unexpired terms. So motion on the floor by Councilwoman Wallace. Is there a second? Second. Uh, second by Councilwoman Williams. Any uh, questions to the motion? I have one question. Yes, ma'am. Um, for the alternate, it was, is it going to be automatically alternate place one or place two? One expires on January 2025 and the other in 2025. Does it matter? He was saying this current spot. Folder. Yeah. So Can to we... answer the question, um, Mayor Council Members, Veronica Rivera, Assistant City Attorney, is yes, you would have to designate which place, and it would be um, for Gabrielle's place. So it would be for alternate number two, Gabriella. He just stay in one. He would just stay in one, um, but do we have to declare a vacancy for uh, alternate number his, two? You would be filling alternate number two. That's the only part of your motion that you need to fill. Keeping Gabriel as an alternate. They stay in the same position. Okay. Apologies. Uh -huh. Yes. All right, we have a motion on the floor. Uh, any other questions to the motion? Good. And all in favor? 
Po, motion passed. Move on item up, item number uh, 11. Consideration, <coughs> excuse me. Consideration discussion possible action on a resolution requesting leave to enforcement of the extra, extraterritorial uh, jurisdiction order to the Bronx, Texas, consistent with United States Act 65.05 slash 3 to the Express Work District. Uh, City of Miami, Texas. Is there a motion on the floor? Mayor Council, I'd like to make a motion that we approve resolution number 2024-21, requesting the release of a portion of the extraterritorial jurisdiction of the City of Austin, Texas, consisting of a 155.050 acre tract, more or less to the extraterritorial jurisdiction of the City of Maynard, Texas. A motion on the floor by Council Member Lane. Is there a second? I second. Second by Council Member Wallace. Any questions to the motion? Hearing none, all in favor? Opposed? Motion passes. For consideration, discussion, possible action on the resolution provides for approval of the letter of for the Secretary of the Office of Human Veterans Agreement and provides for other action. Is there a motion on the floor? And Council would like to make a motion that we approve resolution number 2024 22. Approving the letter of agreement with Fletcher, Farley, Shipman, and Salinas LLP for litigation services, authorizing the city manager to execute the letter agreement and providing for related matters. A motion on the floor by Council Member Lyon. Is there a second? Second. Second by Council Member Lee. Any questions to the motion? Hearing none, all in favor? Opposed? Motion passes. Meeting is adjourned at 11 01.